The James Webb Telescope has started its scientific mission. We already discussed the first photos in the last video, but Webb has already shared new mind-blowing images. In the next few minutes, we will analyze Jupiter's rings, spiral galaxies, and photos of galactic hell. As a bonus, we will mention Neptune, a black hole, and possibly a habitable exoplanet. But it will be later. First, let's analyze the incredible photo of Jupiter in infrared light. The first thing that catches your eye is the big red spot, which also shines in this range. The second is a huge Europa satellite on the left side of the image. In fact, Europa is not that big. It's even smaller than the moon. It's the smallest of the four Galilean moons of Jupiter. Ganymede is almost twice as large. Callisto is one and a half times larger. And even Io is 500 kilometers thicker in diameter. It's just that Europa is located close to the planet, and the shot was lucky. By the way, on Jupiter, a little to the right, you can see the shadow of this satellite. Scientists are very interested in Europa. It is considered almost the main candidate for the presence of life in the solar system. True, the radiation levels on the satellite are off the charts, but that's a completely different story. Our story continues with the fact that the details of the photo did not end there. On the right of the photo, you can see the tiny satellite Metis. Due to its small size, the celestial body was discovered only in 1979. It was immediately revealed that Metis was firstly irregular in shape and looked like a potato. Secondly, it is the closest satellite to the planet. And thirdly, Metis consists mainly of water ice. It's also interesting that Metis revolves around Jupiter faster than it rotates around its own axis. There are only three such satellites in the solar system. In addition to Metis, this is another satellite of Jupiter, Andrastia, and the Martian Phobos. And yet Metis is directly related to the formation of Jupiter's rings. We'll talk about them a little bit later. For now, let's take a look at the left edge of the image. Another satellite of the gas giant is visible above Europa. This is Thebe, discovered almost simultaneously with Metis. As in its case, the satellite is incredibly close to Jupiter. It also has an irregular shape, vaguely reminiscent of the Death Star from Star Wars. Inside, Thebe is also full of ice, which is periodically ejected into space due to collisions with other celestial bodies. The satellite is very interesting, but the ecosystem of Jupiter itself is even more interesting. It resembles the solar system in miniature. After all, the red giant has as many as 80 satellites. Sometimes, like the Sun, Jupiter lures comets with its gravity, making them temporary satellites. This is especially interesting when you remember that according to scientists, Jupiter can be called a failed star. For a planet, it's huge. But Jupiter did not have enough mass to start a thermonuclear reaction. However, it does not lose heart and builds its solar system in miniature with many satellites and of course, rings. Rings that are perfectly visible in the photo for many can be a shock. It is generally accepted that only Saturn has them. But in reality, in the solar system, Planetary rings are quite common. Uranus, Neptune, and the same Jupiter have them. Just unlike Saturn, it's almost impossible to see them with the naked eye, especially if we're talking about such dim rings as Jupiter. Here, a problem familiar to every photographer comes into play. How to take a picture of a dim and bright object at the same time nearby. If you take a photo with a long exposure, the dim will be visible, but the bright will be overexposed. If you lower the shutter speed on the contrary, everything will be fine with a bright object and the dim one will disappear from the frame. Actually, this is perfectly visible even on the calibration photos of Jupiter from the same James Webb. On the left in the photo, with a low shutter speed, Jupiter is visible, but the ring is not clearly visible. On the right, in the long exposure photo, the rings are in place, but Jupiter itself looks like a light bulb. In astronomy, such problems are usually solved in two ways. First, you can choose the angle so that only a dim object is visible. So, for example, in 1996, the Galileo apparatus made a photograph of the rings of Jupiter without Jupiter itself in the frame. The second way is to stack two images on top of each other. This is usually done by amateur astronomers, first taking pictures of the satellites and then Jupiter itself. Putting together the photo will get a complete picture but the infrared range in which James Webb works helps to deal with the problem the easiest way. You can just take one frame where you can see everything. Well, that's in theory. 
In practice, scientists still take several different photos and stack them to make the picture as juicy as possible. Why does Jupiter have rings? Their presence was predicted in the 1960s, and in 1979, the Voyager spacecraft, flying past the gas giant, visually confirmed the Jovian ring system for the first time. In comparison with Saturn, everything is simpler and duller here. Jupiter's rings are very faint and consist mostly of dust. There are four rings in the system, the appearance of which is mostly caused by numerous collisions in orbit. Jupiter is a huge planet with powerful gravity that pulls everything into itself. Small meteorites constantly collide with satellites, resulting in the release of dust. It, in turn, under the influence of the same gravity, settles in orbit, turning into rings, especially going to the previously mentioned satellites of Thebes and Metis. But others do not lag behind them. The process itself occurs constantly. Part of the dust and ice evaporates or leaves the orbit of Jupiter due to the Ponting-Robertson effect. But these particles are replaced by new ones, caused by constant collisions. Such a stormy life is in full swing in the orbit of the gas giant. Let's move on to the next picture. This is the M74 galaxy, also known as the Ghost Galaxy. James Webb produced a furiously detailed infrared image of the object. It's more like the work of an abstract artist, but in reality, we have a spiral galaxy 32 million light years from Earth. Its appearance is very similar to the Milky Way, and the plus and minus dimensions are the same. M74 is well known to scientists, and they decided to photograph it just in order to evaluate how much information James Webb gives out in comparison with Hubble. It turned out that it really is more. The ability to work in the wide infrared range and see through the dust has allowed us to observe the incredible spectacle of a giant whirlpool with gaping holes, in which at first glance there's no matter. In reality, it exists there. But first, let's explain the strange purple color in the photo. The fact is that the dust clouds that we see are mainly composed of polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. These molecules emit very weak wavelengths corresponding to green, but red and blue work properly. When merged, these colors give purple, so it turned out such a beautiful sight. The human eye, after 30 years of images from the Hubble telescope, is hard to perceive. Therefore, scientists also painted the photo in more familiar colors. And still, in comparison with Hubble, the picture frightens with its detail. Perhaps the most noticeable difference is the dazzlingly bright center of the galaxy in the Hubble photo, and in turn, the dim and calm James Webb in the telescope photo. Moreover, there are much more gaps, holes, and stars in Webb's photo, and it is its version that is closer to reality. What Hubble shot in the optical range is data exposed to light and dust, but James Webb ignores light and dust, Although there are problems with colors, but from the point of view of the composition and structure of the galaxy, the detail of the new telescope is simply amazing. Moreover, it raises a lot of questions. Right off the bat, scientists could not explain why the center of the galaxy, so bright in the optical range, is actually empty. Also, the ratio of dust and young stars, which is enough in this galaxy, raises questions. Basically, there are no answers here yet. But it's incredibly cool that the very first photographs of James Webb are already asking scientists fundamental questions. The situation is similar with the third image shared by the telescope. It depicts the galaxy NGC 7496, located 24 million light years from Earth. If Hubble's photograph in visible light has huge light bulbs, a lot of light, and a lot of dust, then James Webb has the most detailed image without unnecessary fog and excess light immediately striking and the main difference from the past galaxy. If it is empty in the center, then the center of NGC 7496, it is incredibly bright as if a light bulb is on. This is another demonstration of how different galaxies are and how little we know about what's happening in them. In particular, we're talking about nuclei. Previously, scientists have not bothered to say that in the center of every galaxy there's a supermassive black hole and therefore everything glows. Now, in the light of new data, the information will have to be clarified a little. For example, in the presence of a supermassive black hole in NGC 7496 is very likely due to the radiation visible in the James Webb photo. But with the M74, everything is not so simple. It's kind of dull to say the least. Basically, the fact that the new telescope mainly photographs not new but already known objects is not a coincidence. 
It is a deliberate strategy for scientists who don't want to waste valuable telescope time searching through the void. So, for example, NASA officially confirmed that James Webb will not look for new exoplanets. Its task is to check existing candidates so as not to waste time in vain. In the near future, the new telescope will study the TRAPPIST-1 system and the exoplanet that is in it. In one of the previous videos, which you can find at the link in the description, we talked about the system in detail. In short, there are very solid conditions for life, which James Webb will check. Also, in July, the HIP-65426 system and its Jupiter-like exoplanet will be examined. It is located only 385 light-years from Earth, so it's possible that in addition to the spectrogram, a small image is still waiting for us. For the following purposes of the telescope, there is a check of Neptune and a couple of galaxies distant from us. We will review these photos as soon as they are released. Subscribe to our channel and switch on the bells. There's a lot of interesting phenomena ahead. Well, that's all for now. See you soon, friends.